Uh, hi everyone, Louie here. Uh, I just got done watching uh, Shadowstack's uh, video on the coins that he will no longer stack. And uh, he uh, spent quite a bit of time reviewing mintages and changing changes in demand that are changing the way that he invests in semi-numismatics. Uh, this video is uh, not for bullion stackers and not, not so much for collectors, but more for uh, opportunistic uh, investors in semi-numismatics, uh, which I continue to do, and I don't do it at the level that Shadow Stacks does, but um, I have some thoughts, and I thought rather than just typing three paragraphs into his video, I would go ahead and make one of my own. Uh, if you haven't seen his video, I'll, I'll link over to it. But basically, he is saying uh, what several of us have been alluding to is that the newer releases with the lower mintages from the Perth Mint, for example, um, like the, uh, the Swans, um, are the new paradigm, the 25,000, 30,000, 50,000, uh, the Korean Mint, uh, etc. Uh, that is more of the level that the market demand will absorb these days. And so the point of his video was that the old standards, the kooks, the kookaburras, um, the lunars, um, and some others that he mentioned, but you know, the coins that everyone has in their collection are ceasing to be a good financial bet. Uh, they're a great collector coin and beautiful quality, and if you have a set going, uh, you, you certainly should continue it, um, because that's only one coin a year. But for those of us who would buy tubes of these coins and then sell them uh, six months to two years later, um, that those opportunities are waning for uh, the Perth Mint and that they are in need of a radical um, uh, intervention in uh, all their core product offerings. So just to go through those, yeah, so yes, I agree. I, I think um, that is an astute observation. Um, the demand is just no longer there for the uh, millions and millions of uh, collector coins and semi-numismatics. And uh, I think you know I put out an alert uh, a while ago for uh, 2017 kookaburras in the uh, in, in uh, the Perth Mint box, a hundred of them for eighteen hundred and seventy-five dollars, I think it was. So eighteen seventy-five uh, for a one-year-old kook is uh, certainly not uh, the kind of numbers that we have seen in the past. Um, at the same time, on the Lunar series, we are approaching the end of Lunar Two. And what happened at the end of Lunar 1, just for your information, they released the last two animals uh, at the same time in the same year and immediately kicked off Lunar 2. And, uh, you know, that was a huge success. But, uh, you know, they, they had raised the mintages up to 300,000 uh, during the Lunar 2 series. And are the Lunars uh, selling out? Uh, yeah, we think they're selling out, uh, unless they're selling out to people who are hoarding them and waiting to release them back on the market, whether those be individuals uh, or those be dealers. Uh, what I have noticed about the Lunars is that the half ounce Lunars are no longer investable. All right, so it used to be you could buy the half ounce Lunars for $11, $12 and sell them down the road for 14, 15 or even more in large quantities. Well, I think the half ounce lunar uh, market has, uh, has rolled over. And uh, so here, is my, here are my suggestions to the Perth Mint, given that everything that Shadowstack said I think is true, and that if you whittle the market down to just the pure single coin collectors, they, um, if the people that had been making money as an investment on these coins stop buying, and they're off buying cryptocurrencies or you know uh, houses or flipping houses or what, whatever they're doing, they are no longer buying the large quantities they bought before, then um, I do think that they will have coins that remain in stock and possibly will get melted. You have to pardon my car noise here. I, I do most of my YouTubing in my car. Um, so um, given if you do think that demand is uh, gonna continue to wane, for Perth Mint products, 
um, and, and pandas and, and other high mintage coins, um, Krugerrands, uh, uh, I mentioned the other day the Panda series I think is completely rolled over. They started having quality problems with spotting. So you get an expensive um, coin right out of the gate that can spot and is being made in ultra high mintages uh, despite the demand in Asia, uh, I think pandas are no longer a good investment. Um, but let me back to the Perth Mint, if they are listening to these videos, and not that they would ever listen to one of my videos, but what I will say is, I think what they should do, aside from continuing to adopt the 25,000 uh, mintage releases, you know, no more than 50, please, um, would be to go back to a mint-to-demand model. All right, I don't know why they ever left this model, uh, perhaps because demand was uh, exceeding supply, but um, a very respectable approach would be to mint and sell as many as the market demands. And that would pretty much guarantee that they wouldn't have a leftover um, uh, inventory that would drive the price down. It would guarantee that there would be scarcity because if people stopped buying them in mass, then the mintages would drop and equilibrium would take hold. So uh, what was a 500,000 series uh, kookaburra, for example, they could have a year where it's 175,000 um, or maybe 80,000 or whatever the market demanded. And when they employed that model in the past, those coins did really, really well because the series popularity increased over time. And so now we're talking about how to revive, uh, you know, this old nag and get it uh, um, trotting again. So uh, mint to demand, I think, would be an exceedingly smart move on all of their coins. The kookaburras, the koalas, the lunars. Um, so that's thing number one. And, and of course, they could reduce mintages from 500,000 to 250,000 or 100,000. And if they did something really dramatic like that, like Shadowstack said, um, to reinvigorate the series, that, that could work as well. <clears throat> but um, I would go the route of minting to demand. The second thing I would do is I would eliminate the majority, I would eliminate all the privies. Personally, I think that was um, opportunistic on their part. So stop all privy coins immediately. Just let it go. Um, then, uh, in, a, in addition to the mint to demand, I would eliminate the sizes that are no longer um, appealing to the market. As I said, the half ounce dying a slow death. And uh, unless they reduce the mintages dramatically on the half ounce, I don't think people are going to want it. I think a lot of the people that bought it were actually buying it for investment purposes. Some of the bigger coins, the five ounce proof uh, kook was a, a market uh, flop, I'm sorry to say, and I bought a lot of them. So um, if you're going to have BU 10 ounce coins uh, that sell for less than proof five ounce coins, uh, you, you, killed, you killed your own market. You know, people will opt for more silver at a lower price. And so the proof, the proof uh, kooks are just not a wise investment. Just be done. Just be done with the proof kooks altogether. All right, eliminate the odd sizes. I'm not sure if that's, you know, you want to eliminate them all. I would retain something bigger, you know, perhaps the 10 ounce. Um, in regard to the Lunars, I would, um, you know, let the Lunar 2 series end and the Lunar 3 series, which I would absolutely do. I would not give up on the Lunars if I were the Perth Mint anyway, if that were my trademark. I think they invented it. Um, I would just go back to the mint to demand model. Again, you know, they've got the uh, they've got the technology, they've got the innovation, they've got the designers, they've got the market. Um, at the right mintage level, it'll be a barnstormer. All right, you know, if you get a, a lunar series, if we had uh, the the 2019 um, or 2020 lunar series come out with mint to demand, and the first year sold. 86,000 or something, in the future, that coin will be amazingly valuable. Now, the other thing that will happen over time is we're in a lull in the market. We've had many years now where silver and gold have been depressed, and uh, eventually that will break, right? So when silver starts to go up again, 
let's say when it cracks 20, that's the number I'm looking for, then the market will change and the collector coins will change with it. Of course, you, you prefer to be in bullion when the market is flying. Uh, bullion is where you want to be. Um, but uh, when the market is tanking, uh, collector coins probably make uh, a, better, a better investment. So those are my ideas. Um, a lot of information there. Please post your thoughts. And I know there's a lot of uh, um, people that are still collecting, investing, trading, selling, uh, these coins. They don't make many videos anymore because YouTube chased everybody away. But um, go ahead and post your thoughts. And I think that's the reality. I'm not giving up on anything. But like Shadow Stacks, um, I don't know why you would buy a monster box of kookaburras um, or pandas or, you know, lunars um, and sit on them and have them not appreciate. There, there's no reason to invest. And I use that word specifically. Um, if the appreciation is no longer there and the demand is no longer there. All right, guys, thanks for listening, and I'll talk to you later. Louie out.